Welcome to the week three go to session. <laughs> this is the third session we're having. I'm going to speed through stuff. I just found out that I was speaking for five minutes and nobody could hear me. Thank you, though, for the people here telling me you couldn't hear. <laughs> Who knows how long I would have went on? <laughs> Half an hour. Um, okay. So as promised in week one, this lecture is entirely devoted to APA. Remember, I joked that this might not be the sexiest lecture, but it might be, uh, it won't, I won't say it's the most useful because week one covered some pretty important stuff, uh, but it might be the most practical, especially if you're at all nervous about APA. Um, one thing that will help is you can see my screen, right? Yes. So I have a blank Microsoft Word document open. So for those of you who are here live, those of you who are watching this after the fact, um, you might open up a, a blank Microsoft Word document as well. Because A, it's going to make the session more interesting if you follow along. B, if you follow along, you'll have your essay set up, right? Um, and C, I don't know. Yeah, just to sit here and watch me <laughs> do steps. I know that some of you might be watching from a tablet or something and can't follow along. But um, if you can, please do. Okay. Um, so APA, we're basically talking about three things here. First is layout. This is why I was showing my paper, right? Those of you who are probably wondering why I'm scrolling through this and not talking, uh, but now sound is working. Okay, so first is layout, which means how the paper looks. So here's the paper that I wrote, okay? I jokingly attributed it to Jane, a student. That's a joke. By the way, you don't have to put your middle initial in there. Okay, so we'll just call her Jane student. Um, but yeah, how do you create the header? How do you insert page numbers? How do you create the cover page? How do you set up paragraphs and spacing? Okay, that's layout. Uh, but there are two other aspects to APA. In-text citations, so stuff like this here, um, the in-text citation, and of course the references. So we're going to cover all three aspects in real time. Okay, so we're not going to talk about this in theory. I'm going to do all this stuff. Um, that's why it's helpful if you have a blank Microsoft Word document ready to go. Um, real quickly, uh, so week three, same as other weeks, okay? We have another general response. People are doing awesome with those, okay? Um, it should be as simple as me just saying awesome job. Sometimes I'll take a moment to make a comment or two. Um, if I don't, it doesn't mean that I didn't like what you said. It just means that I'm, yeah, I'm flying through. But yeah, occasionally I'll stop to comment on something. But mostly I just want a rubber stamp. Like, yes, this person completed the readings and watched a lecture. Awesome job. Easy 100. You have another Achieve module, the final one of the month. Um, and the big guy here is the 3.5 assignment, which is the essay draft. I'm not going to talk about this much because first, you can read these instructions on your own. Um, second, it really is just writing the draft. Okay, You're getting feedback on your outline. I'm a little bit more than halfway through. I think I've gotten 35 outlines handed in so far, and I've graded 19 or 20 of them. So by 5 p.m. tomorrow, those of you who have not received feedback will be receiving feedback. Among the people who are here with us, I know Not Young has received feedback. Juan has received feedback. Uh, who else is with us tonight? I know nobody cares about this, but... That might be it. So, okay. But yeah, by 5 p.m. tomorrow. So you can read all this on your own. I will point out that you have an example. You have, you have two examples. Okay. So first, click this link to see a past student example. This is a essay on the Die Coke ad we looked at in week one. So you can look at her paper, both in terms of what ad analysis looks and sounds like, but also in terms of APA format. And then there's my essay, the one that I wrote on Jeep. Okay. So you have two samples, and I strongly recommend looking at them, reading them. Um, even if you've done awesome on the assignment so far, just, I don't know. I, like, I'm a big fan of learning from example, and most people do learn from example. Like, you know those Renaissance painters? Um, sometimes you learn about them in art history class or in high school. You know, Seurat, that guy who's like pointillism, tiny dots that up close look like fuzziness, but when you stand far away, you can see the picture. Um, anyway, those, those painters would go to the Louvre, right? The famous art museum in Paris and copy, draw, like they sit in front of a painting and try to draw the painting as accurately as they can. Um, songwriters often begin writing songs that are pale imitations of their favorite, uh, songwriters, uh, writers, fiction writers often try 
early on to write fiction and they sound like a pale imitation of their favorite writers. This is, this is normal. So um, yeah, I'm a big fan of studying from examples. So remember every activity, every major writing assignment at least comes with completed examples. So take a look at them. Yeah. Jared says he likes examples too. Good. Because for example, the Diet Coke paper, she has a very clear thesis. Okay. Her three points, language, music, camera movement. And then there's my Jeep essay hiding uh right color imagery tagline and then that sets up the structure for the entire paper so yeah for some students i mean even if you did awesome on the outline it still might be useful but if you're struggling with any of these concepts i think it can be incredibly useful because i have had students where everything clicks once they see examples like okay now i get it now i finally get the feel of what this thing is um, so take advantage of that. But we're going to dive right into APA format, okay? Because really, you just have to take your outline if it's in good shape. You Obviously, you need to make adjustments if I've pointed some things out. Um, but ultimately, you're taking that and turning it into an essay. So really, we just need to cover APA format because you need to make sure that your paper looks clean and professional. So I have a blank Microsoft Word document open. Um, you should all have Microsoft Word. You get it as a full sale student. If you haven't downloaded it yet, you might figure out how to do that. I don't have codes or instructions. You can contact FSO support if you don't know how to do that. Um, if you're using a different program like uh, Apple has or Mac has Pages, which is their equivalent to Microsoft Word, you can do the same things. It's just you're going to have to hunt around for their different functions. Okay, so Microsoft Word is what I'm using. So we're going to begin at the top of the page with what's called the header. And to get into the header, we just have to double click in this top inch area. You can get to it. Let's say you're using a tablet where you can't double click or a different program. Um, yeah, you can use insert, I think. Header footer, or maybe it's view header footer. Yeah, view header footer, okay? Or you can just double click. So, and we have to do, I didn't want that to pop up. Okay, so we have to type the words running head, colon, and after the colon, in all caps, the title of your paper, the full title. So I'm just going to put placeholder title goes here. Okay. So here, not all caps, although the R and running is capitalized, colon, and then your title of your paper in all caps. If we look at the animal logic, the Jeep paper, see, that's what I've done here. Now, this is going to seem a little bit frustrating because I always have to do this two or three times and I don't know why, but I promise you that you'll eventually get it to stick. Um, we need to insert page numbers. By the way, if you're using Microsoft Word, you also have tabs here. So we're in the header and footer tab. Although, okay, there we go, right? We have to click this little guy here that says different first page. Why? Because, see, and then it disappears. <laughs> Go ahead and copy this. So I'm clicking Command C on Apple. If you're using a PC, what is it? Control C. Uh, because yes, we need to click click, click different for first page. Why? Because the words running head, we don't want that to appear on every page. Running head is like an announcement. Announcement, title of my paper. Well, once we've made the announcement, we don't need that announcement to appear on every page. So we click different first page, meaning that the header is going to look different on the first page than all subsequent pages. Now that I've copied it, I can just paste it back in. Okay. You'll see it's going to disappear again. <laughs> so just if you can follow along with my steps, you should be fine. Um, but yeah, copy this so you don't have to keep typing it in over and over again. Um, now we need to insert page numbers. Now, yeah, we have this option here. Or we can go to insert page numbers. So you can do it the quick way or the old-fashioned way and we do want it to show up on the first page and we do want it to be in the top right corner right like where it's pictured click OK and you can see the page number isn't there but it will come back as soon as see what happened now this box is unchecked I should be able to check it and it will come back boom I have no idea why it does that <laughs> okay now another super annoying thing is that the entire paper Okay, so from top to bottom, 
That means the header, the cover page, the essay itself, the references, the whole freaking document <laughs> needs to be in Times New Roman, 12-point font. It does not usually automatically put the header in that font, so you might have to, ch uh, to change it. So if you just highlight it, um, go to the Home tab. This gets you to the main selection of tools, so you can go into the font. See, it's set up for, how do you say that word? Calibri? <laughs> uh, Calibri. So Times New Roman 12 point. Boom. Now it's in the correct font. Okay. Lots of students forget that, that they actually have to go into the header and change the font. We're going to have to do it again here because once you're outside the header, yeah, we have to do these things all over again. Okay. So to get out of the header, we just have to click outside of it. And we're good. Now we're going to have to actually come back here and play around with it <laughs> because. When we get to the header on the other pages, it's going to do some similar goofiness. But OK, we're good for now. Uh, so let's continue with the cover page. So just eyeballing, OK? So guesstimating. Go to the center of the page, both vertically and horizontally. So we're going to use our center tool. Right, so we have the cursor in the center of the page. Now at this stage, I recommend already setting up double spacing, because the entire document also needs to be double spaced. So this little up and down arrow, I'm going to change from 1.0 to 2.0. And I need to type three things. First, the title of your paper. But here, it's not going to be in all caps. You're going to follow typical rules for capitalization. So bigger words, you capitalize the first letter. But if a tiny word like of appears, you wouldn't, or and, or the. Okay. And we're going to fix the font, OK? So this also needs to be in Times New Roman. Good news is once we get all this stuff set up now, we should be good for the rest of the paper, because we have the right font. We have double spacing set up. I'm going to place my cursor at the end here. Here, let me blow it up a little bit for easier viewing. Second, your name goes here, OK? Because that's confusing, because you might think that I'm putting the instructor's name. Let's use someone who's here. Oops. Uh, like Charmaine Atkins. And then the name of the institution. You are Full Sail students, so Full Sail University. Okay. And I'm going to make sure, see, it looks like maybe it could be bumped down one more. Again, just use your judgment. Try to put it in the center. That looks centered to me. So I'm going to put my cursor right at the end of Full Sail University. And I'm going to keep hitting Enter or Return until I get to the first line of a brand new page. As soon as I get to that first line, I stop. Okay, So I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Almost there. One more. OK, one more. Stop. Still centered, we are going to again put our title. Obviously, you won't be typing placeholder title goes over here, right? You'll be putting whatever the title is for your essay. I gave my Jeep essay the title Animal Logic, right? Because remember, it has animals in it. So it appears here, and it appears at the top of page two. So just remember, you have to put in your title. Now, we have the cursor after the title. Now, we hit enter once, just once, not twice, not three times, just once. And we can start typing our essay. We begin at the left. To indent, OK, so the first line of a brand new paragraph is always indented. You hit tab, which is on the left side of your keyboard near the top, tab. And you can start typing your paper here. OK, I'm going to copy this because I want to fill up a whole bunch of space. By the way, when you get to the end of a sentence, right, so period, you hit your space bar twice. One, two. One, two. The other important thing is setting up double spacing means that it's going to automatically wrap around. I know that seems like common sense, right? Not everybody knows that. I have had students who have the document single spaced and they treat Microsoft Word almost like a typewriter. I'm old enough to remember the days of typewriters. I was in the final high school class that still used typewriters. The following year, in 1987, 
<laughs> or 88, I can't remember. Uh, they switched to computers. But yeah, I learned on an electronic typewriter. Um, but yeah, you would get near the edge of the page and then you would manually hit return. Don't do that, okay? Because that creates all sorts of goofiness. Because the program, Microsoft Word doesn't recognize what you're doing. It starts forcing the first word on every new line to be capitalized. So yeah, please set up double spacing and just keep typing. You don't have to hit return ever. Okay. So I'm going to fill up even more space because I want to pretend that I've written an entire paragraph. That looks like it could be the size of an introduction. So I'm going to take all this because I want to fill up even more space. When you get to the end of a paragraph, you hit enter once, just once. Hit tab. You probably won't even have to hit tab because as soon as you do it in the first one, it remembers what you're doing because I've been uh, copying and pasting. It hasn't, but it should remember to indent and keep typing away because here's what students sometimes do. They see this and think, well, this looks smashed together. So I'm going to put some space here. I'm going to put some space here. No, don't do that. Okay. Uh, again, look at the Jeep essay. To my eyes, this doesn't look all smashed together. True, the colors maybe are interfering with how you see things. But um, also open up a novel sometime. If you read the Twilight books or some fantasy novel, you don't see extra space between paragraphs. Okay. This actually is clean. That's By the way, that's the attraction of APA, is that you use one consistent font, Times New Roman, for the entire document. That might seem boring. Sometimes students also want to put in design flourishes, bolding, italics, uh, different sized fonts, different type font. No, no, no. The beauty is its simplicity. Okay. And by the way, again, look at a newspaper. Newspapers use a single style throughout the entire. Um, I don't know if we have people here who are studying graphic design. Full Sail actually has a terrific program in graphic design that's often ranked with pretty prestigious schools. Um, but when you work for a magazine or a publishing place or even a graphic design firm, there are what are called in-house rules, in-house style, like only certain colors you can use, only certain fonts that you can use. Um, this isn't that, but it is in a way we're looking at a consistent yeah, simple, straightforward. Okay, so we've reached the end of a paragraph. Hit enter once, indent, keep going. Now I'm going to pretend that we've reached the end of the paper. So I'm going to fill up a whole bunch of space. Um, what page am I on here? Page four? Yeah. By the way, my Jeep essay is, yeah, just a little bit shy of four pages. And it is, let's see how many words. I think it's over 900. And I'm not going to count the references because that's not really the text of the essay. So tools, word counts, 925. Okay. So yeah, that's how long my essay is. Yours is probably going to be in that neighborhood, maybe a thousand. Very rarely do students go beyond that. Okay. So let's imagine we're on page four. This is our conclusion paragraph. We're done, right? So here is our cursor. After the final sentence of the paper, you keep hitting enter until you get to the very first line of a new page. As soon as you get there, stop. Stop. We are going to again use the, uh, the center tool and type the word references. It's not references colon. It's not references in all cap. It's not bolded. It's not italicized. It's not underlined. Okay. It's just a simple word references. Now we're going to leave this for now because we're going to come back to references. But do I have any questions so far? How many people feel confident that you can follow these steps? Yes, no, hopefully. Everybody. Uh, okay. Jared is with me. <laughs> I know, I know, it's APA. Please hang with me. Everybody else feel confident that if they're not following along now that they can do so if they rewatch this section of the lecture? Good. Charmaine's with me. I got two people hanging in there. The rest are what? Slitting your wrists? <laughs> APA. I love APA. I, I knew nothing about APA before I came to Full Sail. I was used to MLA. 
Now I feel like I know APA pretty well, like the back of my hand. Maybe not that well, but pretty well. Um, I love order. I love <laughs> I love when things look clean and neat. It drives me nuts when it's like uh, you know people don't indent paragraphs and then this is in some ginormous font like twenty four. <laughs> Oh, it drives me crazy. Okay, so we need to fix one more thing, actually, before we move on. So remember when I said that the goal was to eliminate the words running head from all pages except the cover page. Now, if you can't figure this out, I'm not going to make a big deal about this, okay? I'm not going to say, why didn't she get rid of running head? You fail. <laughs> no, you're fine. But it, it's not too difficult to get rid of. Um, so... Just to be careful, I'm going to copy this. <laughs> By the way, did see this is a problem. Okay, for some reason the page numbers didn't show up on every page. So yeah, it's annoying because you have to do you have to redo steps. Okay, so we're going to make this disappear. We're going to go to back to insert page numbers because so we have to redo this step again. And yes, we want it to show on the first page. Yes, we want it in the top right corner. Click OK. Okay, that's good. Title, no running head. Page two. Let's see what happened on page one. <laughs> but look, watch how easy it is. Once I click this box one more time, it should stick. Bingo. Okay, so yeah, it's it's frustrating that you have to redo steps, but it's it's a matter of going back and reclicking that different first box again, going back to insert page numbers, but eventually you can get it so running head, title in all caps, page one. All remaining pages, just the title proper page number okay if you can't figure it out you won't get points taken off but you can you can get it okay so we've covered layout uh, yeah the people have just arrived I've covered layout I've opened up a blank Microsoft Word document. Um, you'll just have to rewatch that part okay but it is useful so now we're gonna move on to in-text citations right so this is when you are quoting or paraphrasing and remember, at the end of last week, I didn't have enough time to cover APA with thoroughness. So I just said, do the best job you can do on APA using the materials we have, such as projectapa.info. Maybe I should bring that up. Projectapa.info. Um, and also the sample outline, right? And by the way, most people are doing a pretty good job. Like most people, yeah, there are some small issues, of course, because we hadn't covered APA in detail. But I could definitely see that most people were giving it the good old college try. So let's talk about in-text citations. So I'm going to go back to that article I found last week in the research databases in the Full Sail Library, EBSCO host. I'm going to fly through these steps because we covered them last week. I'm going to select all the databases at once and click Continue. And Call of Duty. Gimme Shelter, okay? And I'm looking for this article here, Gimme Sales by Ann Donahue of Billboard Magazine. And remember last week I said that this article is short and it's not awesome because it's not answering the question, why this song? Remember, analysis seeks to answer the question, why? Why did they choose this song? It could have chosen a million songs. Why this one? But I did say there's something interesting here that the Vice President of Music Affairs for Activision actually flew to New York to get permission from both the rights holders, Apco Music, and even showed a version of the ad to the Rolling Stones, the band, to get their approval as well. Like, that's not answering the question, but it is sort of like secondary evidence that, yes, they wanted this song. Not just any song. This song. So, okay. Now, there are two ways we can go about this. This is what I tried to get into last week. This is what makes APA a little bit confusing if you've never dealt with it before, is that it's sort of like choose your own adventure because there are always two ways you can handle a quotation or a paraphrase. And it all depends on whether or not you want to use the author's name in your actual sentence or not. So I'm going to show both ways to do that. Second, I think this is a great time to paraphrase because what students sometimes do, and it's, I understand why they do it. It's not that it's, there's nothing insidious, though I have seen, I pointed out already in a couple outlines, is that they'll take the whole thing, right? Just copy it, drop it in their paper. It's like, good, just, you know, 
brush your hands clean and done. But that's a that's a paragraph, right? And ideally, you should be finding short quotations that support your ideas, not the other way around. Your brief ideas that support long quotations. <laughs> um, no. So because I could explain this in my own words, paraphrasing would be a good option because I don't think there's anything that quote worthy. That's the other issue. It's like, how quote worthy is it? Yes, it can be attractive sometimes to say, oh, wow, this says it better than ever I, I ever could. So I'm just going to take the whole thing, drop it in my paper. But really, what is there here that's quote worthy? So this is a good, I think, candidate for paraphrasing. I am going to show how you can quote as well. But let me first show the paraphrase. So let me go back to my document. And let's imagine that this paragraph here, Okay, I know there's a lot of gibberish. You can start, start typing here. You can start typing here. Let's imagine this is the paragraph about the Call of Duty ads use of music. So, again, two options. Actually, you know what? It's a series of options. First, you have to decide, am I going to quote directly or am I going to paraphrase? Paraphrase means you say things completely in your own words. But because it's not your ideas, you still have to cite. Okay, so that's choice number one, quote or paraphrase. Choice number two is, how do I want to go about this? One option is to mention the author's name in your actual sentence. For example, according to Anne Donahue. But here's the rule. If you mention the author's name in your sentence, immediately a year has to go in parentheses. I think it's 2010. I'll double check when I go back to the article. Okay, that's just a rule. Use the author's name in your sentence. The year has to immediately appear in parentheses. And you can add extra information if you want, like according to Ann Donahue of Billboard. <laughs> Almost started typing Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins. Uh, of Billboard Magazine. Okay. Um, and here I'm going to show how to paraphrase. So I'm going to take all this information and put it in my own words. Now, in your own words means completely in your own words. Um, some things, yeah, you. There's no other way to say Activision Vice President of Music Affairs, Tim Riley, right? I mean, you can reorder things, but still, there's no other way to say this. Tim Riley's his name. This is his position. There's not much you can do. But you can't do, like, according to Activision Vice President Tim Riley, obtaining Gimme Shelter for the ad was no small accomplishment because you're still using the entire, you're using the same wording. You're just changing an occasional word. No, you have to write things in such a way that it's coming from you. Okay, but we're going to attribute that the information comes from this source. So uh, bear with me because I'm going to be making this up off the top of my head. So according to Ann Donahue of Billboard Magazine, uh, Active, uh, Activision's Vice President of Music Affairs flew to New York to obtain permission uh, to use Gimme Shelter. Even going so far as to let the Rolling Stones see an early version of the ad. I'll stop there, okay? I could work on perfection later. So um, I, I could go back and double check. What's more, for the first time in Activision history, it allowed another company to make edits. Okay, so no, I'm not using any of that language, right? This language is all mine. Uh, let me highlight it so you can see things more clearly. Okay. Guess what? We're done. That's the awesome thing about paraphrasing. All you need is a name and a year. But here's the thing. You don't have to mention the author's name if you don't want to. Okay. Um, so when should you mention the author's name in your sentence? When should you not? You're going to have to go by gut. Here, it's Ann Donahue. She's not a famous person, I don't think. But she's writing for Billboard magazine. That feels like it has a weight. Like it just, it feels like something that, yes, makes sense that you would put on the page. According to Ann Donahue of Billboard magazine. Okay. Um, but you don't have to. For example, you could do this. According to Billboard magazine, Activision's vice president, blah, blah, blah. And then at the very end, put author's last name, Donahue, comma, year of publication, 2010. 
in parentheses. And you're done. Okay? Paraphrases, you only need an author's last name and year. Whether you want to put it in the beginning of the sentence, like I did before, or just find your own way to deliver the information naturally and put it at the end. Okay? Does this make sense to people? Uh, by the way, the period, the end punctuation, always goes after the citation. The citation is the true end of the sentence. Because I see a lot of this, and I get it, right? Common sense tells you, no, 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 the sentence ends, ends here. But look what happens. Then, technically, the sentence ends here, and you have a weird sentence that begins, parentheses, Donahue, th Donahue 2010, you can start typing. <laughs> so, no, the, the sentence truly ends with the citation. And we do not put this final period there. Okay? So, what if they don't give the author's name? Good question. So if there is no author, the rule is to use the first two to three words of the article title. So imagine this was an untitled piece. In this case, it's it's a two-word article. Gimme sales. Punctuation almost always goes inside quotation marks. 95% of the time. Okay. Um, imagine if you had... Here, let me just put some... This is my essay, but... Imagine you have an article titled the road, uh, the road Ahead, The Road Behind. Okay, Again, take the first two to three words. So the road ahead or the road. Oops, sorry. Right. So we're in imagination land here, but you can do this or this. Okay, so the first two to three words. Let me return it to how it was. Donahue, 2010. Now, what if there's no date? Then you use the abbreviation ND. End period, D period. And of course, you could have a situation where there's no author and no date. I think that would be a pretty suspicious, maybe not suspicious, but I would make triple sure that it's a quality source because no author, no date, no nothing. <laughs> But it can sometimes happen. I have to take a sip of my coffee, so give me a second. Now, keep these basic um, strategies in mind because it's almost the exact same thing for direct quotes. Okay, so I just showed how to paraphrase. Now, let's say you want to quote something. Again, we don't take the whole thing. <laughs> that's, not, that's someone else speaking entirely for you. Um, by the way, you can take chunks you don't even have to take an entire sentence. For example, I'm just going to take this. Okay? Because to me, this seems like the most quote-worthy part if I had to quote something. I think paraphrasing is best, but if I had to quote something, this... Yeah, I like the way this is written. But yeah, I'm not taking all of it. I'll just take this chunk here. So let me go back. Now, same rule applies. We could either... Here, let me get rid of this for the time being. We could either mention the author's name in our sentence, according to Anne Donahue, and if we mention her name or any author's name, immediately in parentheses, the year needs to appear. Just a rule. That author's name appears, boom, year. And by the way, there's always a space. Okay, I see this a lot. So space before and after. So according to Anne Donahue, 2010, of Billboard magazine, Activision Vice President of Music Fair Food New York to obtain permission to use Gimme Shelter. Um, and quote, and now I'll put in my quotation. It's gonna screw everything up. Watch. So hold on, let me fix this real quickly. Because this option doesn't work for some reason. Okay, so 2.0 uh, times new Roman 12. Okay. Uh, for some reason, the font looks grayed out. Yeah, check for these things, by the way. Funkiness that happens when you copy things over. So, uh, okay. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Actually, let me highlight all of it so you can see. So, you see what I did there? According to And On You, Billboard Magazine, and I start paraphrasing. Activision's Vice President, this is my words. Activision's Vice President of Music Ferris flew to New York, New York to obtain permission to use Gimme Shelter, comma, and, quote, 
For the first time in Activision history, it allowed another company to make edits to the ad itself in order to obtain approval from the band members as well. End quote. Now, because we've already mentioned the author's name in the beginning of our sentence and provided the year, there's only one thing we need here, a page or paragraph number. Why do I say page or paragraph number? Because some documents don't have page numbers. Like this is a one page document. So we just have to identify what paragraph the quote appears in. One, two, three, four, five. It comes in paragraph five. And the abbreviation is lowercase p-a-r-a -A, period space five. And again, the period does not go here. Okay, it goes after the citation, which is the true end of the sentence. Now, if it's a page number, the abbreviation is just lowercase p, page 5, or 52, or 525. But in this case, it's a paragraph. In general, uh, when you find a PDF file in the Full Sail Library database, it will have, it will be an exact like photocopy of the actual pages that appeared in the journal. So those will have typically page numbers, but lots of online articles where you keep mm -hmm. scrolling down to read. Yeah, they won't have page numbers. So you have to list the paragraph number. Now, same logic. If we don't mention the author's name, we can just find our own natural way to present the information. So according to Billboard Magazine, Activision's vice president, blah, 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 and quote for the first time in Activision history, blah, blah, blah. And we save everything for the end. Author's last name, Donahue, comma, year, comma, page or paragraph number. Okay, does this make sense? And if you ever get confused, remember you have examples. So you have the Jeep essay. All you have to do, like here's an example where you see both methods. This is a paraphrase, J.M. Fenster, and here I decided to use his name. So immediately the year appears, 1991 writes that the Jeep, a wartime American creation, was valued by soldiers for its versatility. That's entirely my own language, but I got this information from Fenster. But it's not a direct quote, so I'm done. Name, year, done. Okay. But here's a direct quote. Norm Norville also mentioned his name, 2014, in his article. You don't have to mention the name of the article, but for here I felt like sharing it. In his article titled, blah, 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 also emphasizes utility, stating, quote, the Jeep has become one of the most versatile vehicles ever produced, end quote, page 44, right? So name, year, page 44. Earlier, I do the option where I do not mention the author, because this guy's some Kevin Radich, I think is his name. It starts with a K. But anyway, nobody knows who that is. And he's writing for, what is he writing for? Uh... Branding Magazine. Okay, it sounds nice, but I don't think people automatically... Trust your guts. You'll either feel the desire to mention the author's name in your sentence or not. So here I just found my own natural way. The ad encourages viewer interaction, comma, for quote. When rotated, each of the benches draw, drawn animals, blah, blah, blah. And then when the quote ends, I save everything for the end. Last name, year, page, or paragraph number. So even if you can't retain the information that I just covered, because it is a lot, right? You have to decide, am I quoting? Am I paraphrasing? Am I going to use the author's name in my sentence, or am I going to save everything for the end? If you get confused, either open up the Jeep essay. I think the Diet Coke one also has examples you can look at. So here's her paraphrase of an idea from the Pathos, Ethos, and Logos in Advertising. Here she mentions the author's name in her sentence. Direct quote, saves the page paragraph number for after. Um, here's another paraphrase. Okay, so she said this all in her own words, but obviously the statistic about 22% comes from this source. So, um, by the way, project APA, uh, dot info is good for like, what do you do if there are two authors or three authors? You can just go to in-text citations, works by multiple authors. See, two authors, three to five authors, more than five authors. Um, it's, it's, it's not that difficult, but it takes some time, I think, just to get used to it. But once you get it down, it's, it's really not confusing. Um, really, <laughs> I promise. <laughs>
Like I can do it in my sleep now. But yeah, at first it was a little bit different than MLA. Okay, so we have one more thing to go over, which is the references page. How do we make the references page look like this? So let me go back to my document. Now I have to go fix something because I'm sure the word references has gotten bumped down because I added text. So this needs to be at the tippy top of the page and it needs to be centered. Okay. And by the way, it's not works cited, bibliography, sources, just the simple word references. Okay. Now I'm placing my curs cursor after the word and I'm going to hit enter once, just once. Okay. And we begin on the left. And this is where we can start entering our references. Now, here's a cool thing. If you find something in the Full Sail Library database, yes, use the citation tool. But here's the caution. You have to fix things. The citation tool loves to make mistakes. And if you use a different citation tool online, because I know they're out there, Citation Machine, uh, they have all sorts of different names. Um, yeah, they usually make errors. But you can still grab it to get most of it right. So here's the APA reference. See, I can already see there's a mistake. The author's name should not be in all caps. But OK, most of it's right. So let me go ahead and grab it. Copy. Go back to my document. Paste. Usually, when this clipboard appears, if you just click Match Destination Formatting, it will automatically change it to Times New Roman double spaced. Okay. But now we have to fix things. Author's name should not be in all caps. Uh, second, and you will really impress me if you can remember this rule, because hardly any student does. And I'm not saying that to criticize students. I'm saying it's such a nitpicky rule that it's easy to forget. Article titles, or whatever title, the title of the article, the video, the, the whatever source you've, you're citing or quoting from. The rule is you capitalize just as you would a regular sentence. So the G and gimme would be capitalized because it's the first word of this quote unquote sentence, but not the S in sales. So here, let me make up uh, an example. Remember my made up article title, the road ahead, the road behind. Okay. Like this is how you would capitalize it in MLA. In APA, you would do this. Oops. <laughs> okay. And it might look weird to your eyes because you're so used to automatically capitalizing major words in MLA that when you look at APA references and see this, it's like, why is nothing capitalized? Because that's the rule. We capitalize just as we would a regular sentence. There are some, again, awkward exceptions. If there's a colon, we do capitalize the first letter of the word that comes after the colon. Um, so you can see throughout, that's what I'm doing here. Here, I don't capitalize the word Jeep because it's not Jeep the brand. It's the general vehicle. Same thing here. Here it is Jeep the brand, right? So here, let me make up another fictitious title. Uh, Taylor Swift hits the road on her new tour. Okay. In MLA, we would do this. Okay. I'm not going to capitalize all of them, but you get the gist, right? I could have just hit undo. Um, but yes, the T is capitalized, but so is the S in Swift. We wouldn't do this because, again, we capitalize just as we would in a normal sentence. So her name would be capitalized normally, so it does here. Or if the word Wednesday appears, okay, we wouldn't do this. So see if you can show off and remember this capitalization rule. We capitalize the titles just as we would a regular sentence. By the way, I hate it when it does this. I don't like to see the link. <laughs> Hyperlink remove. Um, we're not done. For paragraphs, we indent the first line of new paragraph, but we do not indent any other lines. On the references page, it is the exact opposite. We do not indent the first line, but if it goes to a second, third, or fourth line, we indent those. So I'm going to put my cursor right in front of that second line, and I'm going to go up to my ruler and grab the bottom half of this hourglass and drag it over half an inch. 
boom, done. And it will remember this for every subsequent entry you do. So here, let's do another one in real time. Okay, so I've already done a search for Call of Duty Black Ops. There's a soldier in all of us. And I'm just going to grab anything, okay? Because I'm not really um, that picky about... Um, I do want it to be from a... Ideally, from a source that I've heard of. <laughs> uh, what was that first one? Ad Age. Ad for... Uh, PC Magazine. Okay. That's that I recognize. Or oh, yeah. well, no, that seems off topic. Okay, let me take this one. Or where was it? PC Mac. So we have all the information we need. Okay, we don't have a citation generator, but we have an author's name, we have a date, we have a title. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the title. Hmm. Because I'll need to copy that. So his name is Tony Polanco, uh, 2015, November 2nd. I think this is for a different game. This is Black Ops 3, but who cares? We'll just, it's an example. Okay, so Polanco, last name, comma, first initial, Tony, period. Always a period between each section of information. Okay. Um, date, what was it, 2015, November 2nd. Why this date here, the fuller date here? I'm not going to make too big of a deal if you only put the year. I'm not going to freak out. The rule is when it comes from something like a daily newspaper or a general website, something that's published often, the fuller date is more helpful. Okay. Um, typically, the stuff found in the Full Sail Library database, like journals, are published sometimes quarterly or once a month. Um, so the year is good enough. But things that are published quite frequently, um, the fuller date, period. Um, uh, use your discretion, okay? The rule is, <laughs> this is what drives people crazy about APA, <laughs> all the exceptions. If it comes from like a legitimate like journal or big name newspaper, yes, you put the name of the publication, italicize it. If it comes from a website, you don't have to, okay? So, um you don't have to put PC mag in italics here, but if you want to, that's fine. Uh, but first we need to put in the article title. That looks terrible, but no problem. I'll click on my click, click, click on my clipboard, match destination formatting and boom. Although it is keeping that bolded. I don't want that. So I'll remove that. Um, but now I have to fix things. So call of duty black ops three, that will remain capitalized because that's the title of the game. But the Allen launch, no, we wouldn't capitalize that normally in a sentence, nor the team trailer, nor the essence shows. Um, this we would keep because this is the title of the trailer itself. Does this make sense? Am I starting to confuse people? Because I know I'm getting into really, really, I'm getting in the weeds here. Okay. Okay, good. Darnell says yes. Um, again, if you ever get confused, imitate the examples. Just open up the Jeep paper, the Diet Coke paper, uh, go to projectapa.info, and just do the same thing. Okay, You can easily go to the Jeep essay and follow along. Right? You see me do this, you put your own author's name. You see a date, you put your own date. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, there are lots of nitpicky exceptions. Um, so, period. P C how's it spelled? P C P C Mag. Okay, and then retrieved from. Here it was already given to us. Um, but here we just grab the URL. and paste it in, okay? And we need to drag that over half an inch. And look, I'll, I'll, I don't have another example, but look, I'll make one up off the top of my head. Smith, John, um, actually let's do two authors and 
Oops, <laughs> that's not the symbol. Where is it? And Miller. J D. Uh, 2012. Let's say it's come. Let's say it comes from a journal. So we'll just leave it at the year. Okay. The road ahead. The road behind. What the future has in store. Okay. So. T gets capitalized because it's the first letter of a sentence. This website, I think, is making my machine go bonkers. So out of there. <laughs> Goodbye. Adios. Um, but everything else, lowercase, right? But because there's a colon in this uh, made-up title, we do capitalize the W that comes after. Okay. Um, let's say that it comes from Forbes. So the name of the publication gets italicized. Retrieved from HTTP www.blah.com <laughs> right it's that easy so I you can do this either by from this lecture from imitating the examples in the two sample essays or going to project apa.info it is this simple um, let's see is there anything else I needed to cover oh okay so what if there, I, I know it's 8 p.m., so I'm going to shut things down soon, but what if there's, like uh, Jared asked with the citations, what if there is no author? Like, what if there's no author to this piece? Then the rule is, well, if we don't have an author, we just get rid of that. And the title actually gets moved up. The title goes first. Give me sales. Oops. Okay. So we begin with the title, then the year. What if there's no year? What if there's no date? N, D, N period, D period. Okay. And then just follow. And Project APA will cover that. Okay. Here, let me get it back to how it was, though. Mm -hmm. There we go. Um, do put your references in alphabetic order. So D comes before P, which comes before S. Um, oh, again. I mean, if you keep it in there, I won't. I don't care. But it drives me nuts to see the hyperlink. So remove hyperlink. Okay, it just looks cleaner. So questions, comments about APA, about the upcoming paper that is due Sunday, about anything in the class in general? Now it's time to ask. If you are comfortable with what we've gone over, I do thank you so much for attending and hanging in there. I know that APA is not the most thrilling thing, but I do think it's incredibly useful. Okay, because I actually I love doing this. I said earlier that I love order. I love making things look nice, nice and clean and tight and orderly. Um, so yeah, I love opening up a blank Microsoft Word document and going through these steps. I could do this all day. <laughs> I love seeing perfect order. Perfect, perfect order. <laughs> Look how clean that is. And Charmaine's name is still there. <laughs> Maybe she doesn't like that. Here, let me put my name. It's just that confuses people because they think, oh, I, I need to put the instructor's name there. No, your name goes there. Here, student name. Okay. Uh, Nicholas says, still trying to figure out how to set up the headers. Were you here for the first, were you, were you here? I think you were in the room from the beginning, right? I'm not sure what part you're having trouble with, but, um, yeah, you might have to watch it again. It, get, it gets confusing because remember, things disappear. So you have to click this box two times and you'll have to go to insert page numbers twice to get things to stick. Worst comes worst if you can't figure out how to eliminate the words running head. And it appears on every page. I'm not going to make a big deal about that. Okay. Uh, but yeah, if you watch the first 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, you, you'll get it. Okay. Um, and again, remember to go in there and make sure that it's in Times New Roman. Because I see that a lot too. Um, both the header and the text outside the header need to be set in Times New Roman 12 points. And I do think it's important to get these rules down because I do see students who find templates, but they don't realize that the template doesn't do all this for them. Like, yeah, it gives them the basic structure, but they think like the template's magic. Like, 
it's going to make their paper look like this. No, it's much better if you can go in and set it up yourself. Much, much better. Um, and then, yeah, you'll get a, a paper that looks like this. And maybe you think it looks boring, but believe me, it looks so nice when I get paper after paper that looks like this. And you know what? It helps your grade, too. Not only because there is a grading category for APA and research, but it just it gives a better impression, right? It's like going into an interview. Who's going to get the job? The person who is showered and shaved and quaffed and is wearing a nice suit or a nice dress, or the person who comes in with a stained pair of jogging pants. <laughs> um, yeah, the writing just looks better when it's formatted properly. Yeah, Darnell is. Uh, you, there's a little function on the bottom of your control panel, Darnell, that will change your comments from private to all because I can only see your comments and they're clearly, I think, not only intended for me. But yeah, actually, I covered that at the beginning that the quickest way to go in is just to double click. But because not everybody has Microsoft Word or they might be working from a different version of Microsoft Word because there's a free version of Microsoft Word online called Microsoft One Word. And I haven't gone into it for a while, but I know a couple of years ago it didn't have all these fancy tools. I mean, it does, but you had to go into the menus. So if you do have to go into the menus, you can still get to anything, view header footer, right? And it will get you in. Um, under that header footer tab, there's the page number options but there's also the old-fashioned way, insert page numbers, okay? So yeah, you can always get it, get to whatever function both ways. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, I think, because questions are not coming, which I'm going to take as a good sign. Oh, Jared asks, what is our word count? On the instructions page, it says 700 to 1,400 words. I'm going to be honest, 700 is really short. I did a word count on my paper, which remember is just three pages. Not even three pages. There's a little bit of leftover room here. And my paper is 925 words. And if you have all five paragraphs, I don't think it's going to be very difficult at all to get to 800 words. 700 words, that's like under two pages or just barely two pages. So yeah, it says 700 to 1400, but you're probably going to be in the 800 to 1000 range. But yeah, technically the instructions say 700 to 1400, but I rarely see anybody go over 1100 words. And well, what papers I do get that are 700 words are usually very thin. Um, again, I don't think my paper is like, my essay is super wordy. It's got an ambitious introduction, I'll admit that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. And also, like I said, when you look at examples, you can see, I mentioned this, I think in week two, that there's not one way to structure a body paragraph, but I think in general, having a topic sentence, explaining the issue, because remember the general reader is not super familiar with your ad. You can't assume that. Um, so topic sentence, explaining the issue, describing it, then getting into the analysis, right? So it means if you're talking about the Call of Duty ads, use some music, you'd have a topic sentence that mentions music. Then you would explain to the reader that the ad uses this famous classic rock song, Give Me Shelter by the Rolling Stones. Uh, once you, you might even describe a bit more about the song. I don't know. And then you get into analysis, right? Why this song? Um, and that's a pretty good strategy to take. And if you look at both the Diet Coke, the Diet Coke does the same thing. It does not assume that readers understand things. So she explains that the ad begins with the words tall, dark, and handsome, displayed in a retro-style font in front of a tall, narrow glass of ice that is slowly filled with Diet Coke. In this context, the words refer to the beverage, of course. See, she's, we talked about this last week, right? Holding the reader's hand. Um, that's my other tip, is like, read your work, read your draft from the perspective of someone who is not you. And do it honestly. Like, read your paper as if you don't know anything about this class, this assignment, me, or even yourself. <laughs> Just pretend you're some Joe Schmo, some plain Jane, who has accidentally stumbled upon your own paper. If you read from that perspective, I swear you will spot so many things. 
You'll spot everything from awkward sentences to unclear sentences to things that need to be explained more clearly. Um, and it's a, it's a skill that those of us who have been writing for a long time sort of do automatically, um, but it's a super important skill. Yeah, page count, Jared, I'd say kind of in that two and a half to three page range. I'd say, yeah, 99% of student papers are somewhere between two and a half and four pages. I'd say th three pages like mine is probably, how long is this Diet Coke one? Let's see, page one, page two. Oh, hers is short. But that's because it's in week four. You'll see that she revised. Okay, so I'm getting ahead of myself, but if we go into week four. Uh, click here. Let's see. So I think she has a more ambitious introduction now, I think. One, two. Uh, it's not terribly longer. So, okay. The Diet Coke one's not terribly long. It's two and a quarter. <laughs> but if you can write two and a quarter pages that are as strong as this Diet Coke one, yeah, it's, again, it's not like uh, nobody should be just filling up space. Okay. Um, what did I say? Oh, yeah, I was going to stop the recording. So to those here, hang out. I will hang out for a few more minutes. To those watching, thank you so much. I'm going to stop the recording now.